Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I review five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Pendulum from Stonemaier Games, specifically the solo play with the Automa. Disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this game. I tend to be a pretty big fan of real-time games, and sometimes a fan of Euros. How do I feel about this mashup? Let's find out and get to the list. I'm starting out with a mix at number 5, and that's how the Automa runs in the game. On the positive side, I like how they compete with you through a pretty simple card mechanic. And one nice thing is that they have a lot of difficulty options here, so you can tailor the game to exactly how much challenge you want. But another cool thing that kind of reminds me of a game like Galaxy Trucker is that as you get better at the game, you have the option of flipping up their cards ahead of time and seeing exactly how many votes they'll have, so you can tailor your strategy exactly to what you need to beat them, making it a more skillful experience overall. But on the negative side, you also have to deal with the Automa during the real-time phase, flipping up cards whenever you take one of your workers off of a spot, and it kind of works, but they often don't do anything of importance, so it feels kind of like busy work, which I guess raises the tension of the real-time aspect, but also isn't very fun or exciting, and just, again, feels like a chore sometimes. But something that's not a chore and I really enjoy is my number four, which is how scoring is handled in the game, especially during the council phase at the end of each of the four rounds. First of all, the victory conditions and scoring themselves are straightforward but pretty fun. You've got uh, three tracks that you're advancing, and and kind of like some other Euros, you really want to pay attention to your furthest back track and make sure you boost that. But some of the characters have different tracks that are easier or harder for them, so you need to kind of balance and change your strategy based on that. But the other thing I really enjoy about the council phase is that in voting order, you get to choose from these reward cards. And this is one of the ways the game kind of ramps up your engine, because you can get these new stratagem cards, more on those in a second, and you can sort of fine-tune your deck, give yourself new tools at your disposal, and the Altama kind of competes for them if uh, they get a higher vote total than you. So I really enjoyed that little slowed down non-real-time portion of the game at the end of each round. And speaking of the stratagem card, they're my number three, also a pro, and I really enjoy these. You start out with four based on your character, and there are a wide array of characters, ten in total, so really nice variety. And each of the cards gives you different ways to get resources, to break the rules of the game, to get victory points and then you have to build up this one resource to get them all back. So as your engine gets going, you'll play them, get them back, play them, get them back. It's a pretty cool and definitely gives the game its strongest kind of ramp up feeling. But I'm back to a mix for my number two, which is the core action placement and worker placement mechanics of the game. And on the positive side, these are very straightforward, which you probably need in a real-time game like this. You have some spaces at the bottom that are very fast in terms of the hourglasses where you get your basic resources, uh, spaces at the top, that are good for victory points and kind of building your engine with more provinces. So you have a nice mix of action spaces here, and they are pretty simple to resolve. I also like the provinces that I mentioned a moment ago, because along with the stratagem cards, they're kind of the main engine building aspect of the game, well, that and getting more workers, in that you can place them underneath your player board, and they basically ramp up what each of the four production spaces and actions get you. But on the negative side, after playing a bunch of games, at least solo, they did feel a little bit maybe too simplistic, and I found I was pursuing the same basic strategies over and over again, even when I switched my character, there were only minor variations. So I still liked that they were simple for the real time, but I kind of started wishing there was more going on. And finally we get to the core gimmick of the game, which is the hourglasses and the real time nature. And this for me is a mix, although it tends a little bit toward the low end. On the positive side, I like some of the things the hourglasses are doing, mostly the fact that each of the different sections of actions has a different cost to it in time. Uh, the black actions take about 45 seconds to get your workers back, whereas it's a much bigger commitment to put one on the purple space, so you have to weigh when the rewards are better. So all of that is pretty interesting, and I think the hourglasses achieve something pretty cool there. But on the negative side, especially in the first two of the four rounds in the game, there will be many, many times where you're just sitting kind of waiting for the sand to run out, and it lacks some of the tension of my favorite real-time games. You just have sort of too much time to wait and think. 
Overall, I had read and heard some pretty meh opinions on Pendulum, and for me, at least for the solo play, I found it pretty decent. Not amazing, not blow me away, but I liked the stratagem cards, I thought the basic actions were interesting sometimes, the hourglasses were sometimes fun, the game sometimes had tension, but you're hearing me say the word sometimes a lot. This is definitely not a strong recommend for me. I think there is going to be a lot of frustration or boredom with the hourglasses and waiting for them to resolve. I think the overall strategy might feel too simplistic unless you push the difficulty all the way up to the top and use the most complicated characters, but then it might be a little bit frustrating in other ways. So the game is okay, but I'm not sure I would recommend it just for solo play. I do think multiplayer might be too chaotic, but maybe that could be fun. But solo play at least kind of lacks the chaos I was hoping for and becomes a bit of a just okay experience. Good gaming and I'll see you at the next stop.